A number of years ago, I was reading a fantastic book about the early days of IKEA as a brand. Some of the things that had happened in those early stages that led to the company being the global success story that it has become. And there was one story that really stood out to me, and it was a story in the early days of IKEA, back when the company actually used to sell ready-assembled furniture. So if you went into an IKEA store and bought a table or a chair, it actually came as a table or a chair, not a flat pack thing with an Allen key. And at one point they were doing a catalogue photo shoot for a whole lot of new season stock items. And at the end of the catalogue photo shoot, all the IKEA staff were putting all the stock back into a truck to go back to the warehouse. But there was one dining table, a big eight-seater dining table, they couldn't fit back into the truck. They just couldn't get the doors closed. And they knew that everything should fit in the truck because it all come in this truck to the, the site for the photo shoot. And they unpacked everything, tried to put it all back in again, still couldn't get this table to fit. And they wrestled with this thing for a good half an hour. Now, standing at a distance was the photographer who, who had been doing the shoot, packing away the lights and the camera gear and the backdrops. And he watched, watched the team wrestling with this dining table and something occurred to him. Something that seemed perfectly obvious from his perspective as someone who wasn't an expert in packing and unpacking furniture. And with the benefit of a bit of objectivity and distance, what he noticed was a simple way to get the table into the truck. And he walked over to the IKEA staff and he simply asked, guys, why don't you take the legs off? Now, it seemed like the most obvious question in the world to him, but all the IKEA staff you know, had never thought of it because they were so close to what they were doing. You know, we often get that way, don't we? We get so close to our roles, we've done it so many times, we often don't see the most obvious things. We can't see the forest for the trees. And so they said, great idea. Took the table legs off, table went in, closed the doors, everything was set. They actually got back to IKEA's HQ and they were laughing about the experience and one of the executives overheard the conversation. And um, he took on board what he had overheard and it started him thinking. And that, 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 that question from the, from the photographer became the seed of an idea. That idea was what if we actually sold all our furniture disassembled and the consumer assembled it themselves at home? And if you trace it back, IKEA's success in the flat pack business world has come from that one photographer's question all those years ago. And you know, as someone who's put together my fair share of IKEA furniture, I often wonder how many relationship breakdowns that one photographer is responsible for. But see, that is the power of a thing I call a posture of curiosity. To observe things and not just go, well, that's interesting, but to go the next step and think, well, that's an interesting observation. What would that mean if I followed that through? What would the result be if we change something in what I'm observing right now? And that was the power, is not just that the IKEA staff took on board the question from that photographer, but that they actually got back to head office where an executive could hear the conversation, hear about the experience, and have the thought, well, what could that mean if we did that across all of our product range? And so I want to challenge you, if you're going to stay at the cutting edge and innovate in a way that's going to keep you growing and, and relevant in the years to come, You've got to foster a posture of curiosity. You've got to be curious about everything you see every single day. And I want to give you a couple of questions, things that are critical to, to building a culture of curiosity within any team. And you know, I wonder what would happen in your team or your organization if suddenly you started asking questions with these sort of words in them. I wonder which ideas would come to the surface that you otherwise would have missed. The first question is the question of what if. When you see something, think, well, what if? What if things change? What if we did things differently? Second one is, why not? Just because it hasn't been done that way in the past, why not do it differently? Third question is, have we ever? Have we ever tried to do things a certain way? Have we ever tried a different approach? The fourth one is, imagine if. See, imagination is, in, is incredibly powerful. And the, and the fifth curiosity question is this one here, how could we? Now, this is so critical. Imagine if, imagine if in an organization or within a team, the culture formed where when someone suggested an idea, instead of instinctively shooting it down or saying that couldn't work, we tried that once, imagine if the culture became when someone suggests an idea, everyone's automatic response was to say, well, okay, how could we make that happen? What could that look like if we actually applied that and it was effective? Because what happens is every time you shut down a new idea or a new suggestion from someone within a team, you, you, share, you model a very powerful message. That message is don't bother sharing ideas because they won't be listened to anyway. So what if the culture was that, how could we in response to any idea or suggestion that was made? And so I want to challenge you as you look to stay innovative and agile at the cutting edge, how can you foster a posture of curiosity, not just observing things, but always looking for the learning that could come from that observation.